What's up guys, it's Kelly and today I've got another swatch and review for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos and let's get started. So today I am sharing with you guys the Morgan Taylor Shake Up the Magic collection which is actually for winter slash holiday 2020 but I did want to share them with you guys now because honestly I don't think these are too holiday like. I think they're actually pretty perfect for like the winter season after the holidays where I normally go towards more like muted and grayed out kind of shades and also because we have an interesting set of choppers in here and I really just wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on them because there's something a little funky about them. So yeah, that is what we are doing today. If you haven't heard of Morgan Taylor before, they are a mainstream salon brand that is five free, meaning they are free of five of the dangerous chemicals that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan and they are cruelty free. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started with the review and then I'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts, availability, and all that good stuff. So roll footage. As always, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains so I will link the one I'm using in the description. So we'll start off with the lighter more neutral shades in this collection. This one is called Bare and Toasty and it is a nude beige cream and oh man when I saw this one I was really excited because personally I love to wear a nude that is just slightly lighter than my skin tone. I always feel like that kind of nude is my perfect nude so when I saw this one I knew it was going to be a favorite. The formula is so easy to work with it gave me perfect coverage in two coats and it was just so smooth and workable and self-leveling. It is leaning slightly cool toned which I think still ends up working for me even though I'm very warm toned but yeah overall just a really gorgeous color. Next up we have the shade Chillin' with Jack and this is a very light taupey almost gray cream shade and again just a really gorgeous neutral color. Like I said I am super warm toned so this one honestly looks a lot more gray slash even purple on me but it is definitely more of a taupe shade. I love colors like this in the winter. I feel like they're so soft and muted and grayish and they just really work with the whole January February vibe for me. I also see myself using this a lot as a background for nail art. Next up we have the shade It's a Wonderful Mauve which as you could probably guess from the name is a super light dusty mauve shade and again just amazing formula on this, amazing opacity. This one was very nearly a one coater for me which I was super impressed with especially considering how light the polish is but seriously the Morgan Taylor formula is extremely workable and easy to use. Like I said I have very limited experience with them. I've only used a couple of their collections so far but they really do remind me me a lot of OPI in that their formula is just very smooth, self-leveling, and like very easy to work with. Next up we have the shade Be My Sugar Plum and this is a darker dusty mauve cream shade and again just a really amazing formula. I think these two colors actually look really gorgeous next to each other so I could see myself using them together for a manicure either to have one as an accent nail or maybe as a French tip. I, I feel like the possibilities are endless here. A nice little diagonal striping tape manicure. Ooh, so pretty. But anyway, this one again, pretty much a one coater, but I did end up doing two for full coverage and it just looked perfect on the nails. Next up, we have the shade Midnight Sleigh Ride, which is a slightly dusty deep blue cream shade. And honestly, when I saw this one in the bottle, I wasn't too enthused. It didn't look very exciting to me, but once I had it on the nails, I really ended up liking it a lot more. Of course, we do have that really impressive almost one coat formula, but I really love having a deep blue that does doesn't look black on the nails. Of course, I love shades that look almost black unless you're in direct lighting, but I also love having an option where you know it's blue even if you're in a low lighting situation. So I definitely see the appeal for this one now. Next up, we have the shade Fala Love That Color, which is a deep, slightly blue toned gray cream shade. And oh man, I instantly fell in love with this one as soon as I tried it on my nails. This is actually what I am wearing along with one of the toppers in the intro and outro outro to this video but yeah overall just extremely impressive great coverage again almost a one coater I ended up doing two I love that sort of bluish undertone that it has I feel like it really just gave me such a good vibe and color and again it just has that sort of wintry post holiday feel to it next up we have the only bright shade in this collection and that is stilettos in the snow which as you can tell is a super bright classic red cream shade again 
amazing formula. This one was a true one coater on me. And one thing I loved about it is it didn't have that jelly formula that reds most often have. It was a true cream. So I really loved that formula, super easy, workable color. And I just really liked it. It's nothing crazy unique, but if you're looking for a good, bright, classic red, I think this is a great option for you. Next up, we have the shade Center of Attention, which is a super deep, red shimmer and this is actually one of those colors that i would say kind of feels like it's one of those shades that looks black unless you're in direct lighting because it is so deep and moody but again it's just a really beautiful color this one was surprisingly slightly sheer on the first coat but it did end up giving me perfect coverage on the second and it looked really beautiful i imagine this one will look really gorgeous with a matte top coat as well but i just love all of those little red particles of shimmer running throughout it just makes it such a deep and gorgeous color. So the next two shades are actually like these frosty metallic polishes that have little fleck shards running throughout. This one is called Don't Snowflake on Me and it's got a slightly purple tinge to it. So you can see there's no brush strokes, but it definitely has that foil vibe to it. And then it does have all of those little shards running throughout and they're just a whole bunch of different sizes there. Now I do think this type of formula is extremely extremely hard to get right. Most of the time, I do not like it. There have been select few exceptions where I liked a foil that had glitter shards in it. And this is one of those cases. This one I don't love as much as the next one that I'm gonna be showing you, but I was really impressed with the formula and I was impressed that it didn't look lumpy and bumpy on the nails. So here is the other one that I was talking about. Again, we have that kind of frosty metallic foil and then we have those glitter shards running throughout. And this one I did end up preferring. They're extremely similar. I'm gonna compare them at the end just so you can see them side by side. But yeah, I really loved this one because I love that it was like that true frosty silver color. It definitely felt like snow to me and I just thought those shards kind of worked perfectly with the glittery base. I just feel like it ended up working really well. I I think the times that I don't like the glitter shards in a polish is when it does have that streaky finish because it almost feels a little bit too busy. But in this case, I feel like it really adds to the polish. So for both of these, I did do two coats for full coverage. Okay, so on to the outliers of this collection, the kind of crazy part. This one's called the Shake Up and it is a silver glitter that you literally have to shake up in order to see the glitter because it settles all the way to the bottom of the polish. It's an extremely thin formula. I I at first really hated it. I was actually pretty angry because I was like, why didn't they use their regular glitter formula for this? Why does it have to be so thin? But once I applied it, I was like, oh, okay, I completely get it. It really melts the glitter into your nail polish and it makes it so smooth and nice. Like, oh my gosh, I instantly fell in love and I regretted everything I thought about these once I applied them. The other shade in this set is called California Gold. And again, you do have to shake it up in order to get all of those glitters to show up and actually be applied on the nail. So this one I also really enjoyed. I did notice as it kind of melts into the polish, I did use a red as a base for this one and I noticed it kind of melted into the red and kind of bled onto the gold. So you do have to be careful of that. But overall, I think it is a very cool effect. It really adds the glitter without making the polish thicker. And it also is extremely easy to remove, not as difficult to remove as regular glitter toppers. So I really loved that as well. So here are all of these shades together and as you can see we have a lot of really nice grayed out wintry shades we do have that standout red color and we have that deep moody maroon shade as well and then we also have the two frosty polishes and the two unusual glitters so I feel like that last row is going to be something that people either really enjoy or really despise but as far as the top two rows go I don't think we have anything terribly unique but I do think they're all very standard well done formulas so if you are looking for these colors, I think this is an incredible formula to work with and especially beginner friendly. I did love their rounded flat brush. It was super easy to work with. So yeah, overall, I actually really enjoyed this collection. So yeah, those are the polishes. And honestly, I am really impressed with their creams. I have only recently started experimenting with Morgan Taylor and I am just so impressed with their opacity and their formula. I really like their brushes and I like the size of the bottles. I will say I was really annoyed when I first saw these toppers and the fact 
fact that you have to actually shake them up and to me that almost signified that it was like a cheap formula and they couldn't use that like nice viscous base that was gonna suspend glitters in it but honestly after I tried it I really fell in love now I do know that I have to be careful especially because it did bleed a little bit with the red polish but honestly I just love the fact that the glitters really melt into your current polish and I feel like you can do a ton of layers without having to worry about the manicure getting too thick and it's so funny because I swatched these right after I had an experience where I was painting a three coat nail polish and I wanted to put a chopper on it and once I had those four coats of nail polish plus my base coat plus my top coat I felt like that manicure was so thick it was actually like I don't know it just it was so uncomfortable so I ended up taking it off and then right after that I ended up swatching this collection and I was like you know what actually I can really see a use for these so I really enjoyed it I instantly put on one of the toppers because I just really like the way that it feels and I feel like it's so interesting because it's not even bumpy at all I do have regular top coat on but I am really curious to hear what you guys think of it I feel like it's gonna be like an either love it or hate it situation so I really want to hear your thoughts so let me know in the comments in terms of availability I get my Morgan Taylor pop polishes from HB Beauty Bar. There they retail for $8 USD for the 15 milliliter bottle. And I do have a discount code. You can use the code Kelly to get 22% off your order there. But yeah, so like I said, I would love to hear what you guys think of these, especially those toppers. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoy my swatch and review video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And that is it. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Raven, and Raven wants to know if you could meet any person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? I feel like that's a really interesting question because this is something that I really don't think about, and one thing that's kind of been instilled in me for like my whole life is don't meet your heroes. There's always going to be a situation where you kind of build people up in your mind, and then when you meet them, you're like a little disappointed. Like a lot of people that I think about as like the people that I, I love, I don't know that I would really totally want to meet them. So I'm not really sure if there's anybody alive or even dead, honestly, that I, I would want to meet. My my mind is leaning towards people like Carl Sagan or like Neil deGrasse Tyson, just like people that I can have a conversation that I can really learn a lot from because I think just both of them are and were like incredible science minds that almost taught those things in a really low level way so that it was very understandable. So I really love that and as a person who doesn't know that much in terms of science, I feel like that would be a good conversation. <laughs> But yeah, so if you guys want to answer this question yourselves, let me know in the comments who you would want to meet, dead or alive. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!